Wait, that is kind of short. Is it a false alarm again? Does this alarm system even follow the EMC standard? Hey, I mentioned about EMC just now. If you want to know more about it, click here. Eh? Where is it? Oh, sorry. Here. Electromagnetic compatibility EMC is the ability of different electronic devices and components to work correctly even in the presence of other devices that emit electromagnetic wave. This means that each piece of equipment emitting EM wave or disturbance must have it limited to a certain level and each individual device must have adequate immunity to EM disturbance in the environment it is meant to function in. Thanks for being there explained, EMC is a branch of electrical engineering concerned with the unintentional generation, propagation, and reception of electromagnetic energy, which may cause unwanted effects such as electromagnetic interference or even physical damage in operational equipment. The goal of EMC is the correct operation of different equipment in a common electromagnetic environment. Electromagnetic interference can cause damaging effects to various technologies. This is why electromagnetic compatibility aims to control this interference in order to mitigate the risk of equipment damage. Discipline related to the promotion of EMC and control of EMI includes Treat characterization, which finding relevant EM trait Setting for standard of emission and vulnerable level, which standardize what level of emission are acceptable Designing for standard compliance for designer and manufacturer Testing for standard components on the design for components and adherence to standard. Fire alarm system is developed to ensure the safety of people and property. However, natural sources cause changing of electrical current and voltages that can cause EMI. For example, electromagnetic radiation from lightning stroke. Because of EMI, the incident of fast alarm, failure of communication, and failure of disruption of electronic parts can happen to the fire alarm system. That is why EMC testing must be done before marketing the product. Let us watch some examples of fire alarm system when facing EMI. Of lightning and thunder out there are so loud I cannot hear
Now I can hear. Ina? Ina? Where's Granny? Ina? <sighs> this kid. Maybe she is at her room. Let's check. What are you doing in the dark? Just listen to the music. Switch on the light. Okay, mommy. I will turn on the light now. Do you smell something burn, Ina? Where is your granny? Oh my god! There is a fire, Ina! Ina, what's the... However, the fire alarm system turned on. This creates false alarm that can cause people to have a panic attack. Moreover, the failure of communication of fire alarm system can happen when the alarm system attracts to other interference from another device. One rarely noticed cause is electromagnetic radiation. It cannot be seen, but it is everywhere. It is caused by fluorescent tubes, energy saving lamps, electrical motors, and Wi Fi are among other things. This type of radiation is on the increase significantly because a lot of everyday items produce electromagnetic radiation due to growth in mobility and through the future networking of machines and devices which communicate with one another. This will also cause a dramatic increase of electromagnetic interference. So, for this part, I'm going to explain more about EMC standards. So, what is actually EMC standards? In order to put electrical or electronic devices on the market, the device is required to comply with EMC standards during its development, design, and manufacture. So EMC standards define the frequency range and limit of unnecessary radiation to prevent telecommunication and broadcasting devices, also electrical or electronic devices from being interrupted, causing interference, or other similar problems. So EMC standards play an important role in adjusting the frequency range assignment by ensuring important radio communication and TV broadcasting, also preventing radio interference. The other purpose of EMC standards is to protect electrical and electronic devices from being subject to various interference, including lighting, surges, and static electricity or damage by minimizing hazard 
from found in their operating environment. So, the MC standard is classified into several parts. First, international standards. Interna international standards developed by the organization that meet the commercially agreed principle of WTO, which is World Trade Organization. For example, ISO, IEC, and also CISPR. Next, regional standards. So regional standards developed to ensure impartiality in trade imports and exports to or from the relevant, relevant region, region. For instance, the EN and Asian. Next, national standards. This standard established when a country needs to have customized standards that suit the actual situation in the country. The famous example for these standards are GIS, BS, and also NNCI. And lastly, industrial standards. Industrial standards define codes and standards for issues that not involve legal action, such as interconnectivity between devices. For example, GEITA and SEMI. So what is important of EMC standing, uh, testing? So first, uh, protection of ele electromagnetic spectrum. So uh, EMC standing uh, is required for devices to ensure electric and electronic device does not emit a large amount of, amount of elect electromagnetic interference. For the second important of EMC uh, testing uh, is product performance. So device can continue to function as in intended in the presence of several electromagnetic ph phenomena. And lastly, for the safety purpose. So every company that uh, producing uh, electrical or electronic devices should be uh, aware with the safety of the devices. If, a fun if the function of those products fail due to electromagnetic phenomena such as power supply surges, ESD or radiated electric fields, then life can certainly be at the risk. So that's all for me. Thank you. Again. So you already know about the general information of EMC. Now I'm going to explain to you about the EMC requirement for radio linker fire alarm system. EMC immunity test shall be performed as described in EN501304 that are applicable to all fire alarm detection and alarm equipment including any radio transmitters and receivers. The first requirement is detection of interference. The receiving equipment shall be able to detect an interfering signal of an amplitude level high enough to corrupt the correctly transmitted alarm signal for supervisory and low battery condition signals. An interfering signal fault shall be generated after 30 seconds of continuous interference at the receiving equipment and indicated within 100 seconds following the detection. And the second EMC requirement is messaging. Within a radio linker system, messages can become altered due to the simultaneous or overlapping transmission of interferences. The format and coding of messages within the system shall be designed so that an alarm caused by such alteration of a radio message will occur no more than once in 10 years for the maximum number of radio linked devices that may be connected in accordance with the manufacturer's specification. And the third EMC requirement is allowance for signal attenuation. Commissioning instruction shall include a procedure to ensure that the signal strength from each 
installed device is such that correct signaling could occur in the event of a further 12 decibels of attenuation of the signal between devices and CIE devices and additional commissioning equipment. A grid fire alarm system can collect data from nearby sources of electromagnetic interference and analyzes it. With this way, the technician can perform a comprehensive cost analysis and immediately take measures by installing it in a different spot or neutralizing the sources of interference by moving or shielding them more efficiently. So that's all for me. Let's go to the next part. Hello everyone. So here I'm going to brief about the testing methods for detection of interference. What are we going to do? First thing first, we need to determine the reference level RL of the receiving equipment. And this value will be used as detection of interference test. So here is a figure that showing the arrangement of the equipment to determine the RL value in a shielded anechoic chamber with the distance of 3 meters between the transmitting and receiving equipment but the signal generator here should be replaced by a suitable load. This test should be performed twice, once with antenna positioned horizontally and once with antenna positioned vertically and the receiving equipment should be oriented for maximum sensitivity. So how are we going to observe the RL? The RL value here is the value observed on spectrum analyzer here that is measured in dBm, increased by 3 dB. This test procedure should be repeated for each receiving equipment on the considered radio frequency or known as RF link. So what are we going to do with the RL value? After we receive the value of the RL, the arrangement of the equipment will be changed as in the figure here in another shielded anechoic chamber with the distance of 3 meters between the transmitting and receiving equipment to detect interference. The RF signal strength level between the transmitting and receiving equipment should be established at the lowest RL value we determined earlier in order the RF link to be evaluated. The attenuation of the wanted transmission signal here should be reduced until the signal level on the spectrum analyzer is equal to RL plus 20 dB. So now, the level of interference generated by interfering transmitting should be increased until 5 or more by the standard transmitting equipment which is also known as the interference level IL of the interfering equipment measured on the spectrum analyzer. So now the transmission of the wanted signal should be stopped and the IL generated should be increased by 30 dB now. Then this detection of interference will be verified in a radio linkage system which the message can become altered due to simultaneous or overlapping transmission of the interference. Check out the link that I gave just now, I bet you did. By now, you should know already what is EMC and the importance of it. For places like factories, offices, airports and even schools, the electromagnetic radiation are kind of high and frequent and the safety requirements for this kind of places are especially important. Before you buy any electronic devices, make sure those devices follow the EMC standards. That's all from me and my friends. Thank you for watching and stay safe.